to drink. It's the last day of dry January, and it turns out I'm not an alcoholic. I just like to drink flavored liquids out of cute cups. I will never quit drinking. Mm. I will never quit drinking. I will always make sure that I can keep my body healthy enough so that I can always drink. I love seeing a sunrise with a cocktail, seeing a sunset with a cocktail, having friends walk into your house with a bottle of wine, getting on a plane. Can I get you something? I'll not to drink. I'm not a drinker. I can honestly say I never had a beer in my life, okay? Right. It's one of my only good traits. I don't drink. <laughs> Whenever they're looking for something good, I say, I've never had a glass of alcohol. I've never had alcohol. I've just, you know, for whatever reason. Can you imagine if I had what a mess I'd be? Would I be the, I'd be the world's worst. Don't drink. Give up drinking. Just stop drinking. What's the point? Especially if you are in your 20s because you need to focus on strong body and strong finances. And drinking alcohol, well, of course, there's the financial side of it actually costs a lot of money. That's a question. I'll never drink again And then I drink again Hello everyone, I'm Xiang Chun. Welcome back to my channel. On the 4th January 2023, the World Health Organization WHO published a statement clarifying that when it comes to alcohol consumption, there is no safe amount that doesn't affect health. This declaration sparked a significant backlash against drinking, emphasizing the idea that risks start from the first drop. This yearly ritual again underscores the accumulating evidence that drinking alcoholic beverages, even in what are considered relatively small amounts, can be harmful to our health. In response to the declaration of WHO, NBC News interviewed eight doctors and nutritionists who generally agree that abstaining from alcohol is the highest option, but light drinking is okay for most people. Two large studies conducted in 2023 found that, firstly, moderate drinkers don't have lower risk of death than lifetime non-drinkers. Secondly, Heart health benefits associated with moderate alcohol consumption could be linked to the way it can reduce stress activity in the brain. Well, the undeniable truth is even a single drop of alcohol intake carries risks, as alcohol itself causes harm. Dr. Nimi, great to have you on the news hour. Uh, before we get to this changing guidance, can you just remind our audience what do we know? about alcohol's impact on us? Sure. Well, you know, alcohol is one of the leading behavior-related uh, causes of health problems and deaths and also some social problems and, and economic costs, I, you know, ranging from things like injuries and accidents to cancers and actually uh, heart and cardiovascular disease. However, the situation of drinking at a low risk level in the video I also call it moderate drinking or light drinking is far more complex. In real life, merely considering about the physical and biological impact of alcohol is not enough. Rather, complex mental, social, cultural, and gender related factors also come into play. Low risk level drinking means Individuals are aware of the alcohol risk and accept the evidence-based advance. And in turn, they will make informed and healthier choices about their alcohol consumption. This light drinking occurs in many social occasions, such as having a glass of wine with dinner, enjoying a gin when chatting with friends, and enjoying the pleasure of tasting wine. The notion that drinking may somehow improve health is misguided. But moderate drinking has engaged in people's daily lifestyle and living habits. There is a general theory that maybe people who can impose moderation with regards to how much alcohol they consume are also more able to impose moderation broadly in other aspects of their life, such as eat more vegetables and engage in more physical activity than people who do not drink at all. 
The aim of this video is not to advocate for low-risk level drinking, but rather to uncover the various social elements associated with this drinking pattern, including people's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors involved in it. The interview data in today's video are from Australia, Canada, the US, the UK, Denmark, and I will specially mention when the data refer to China and Japan. The video breaks down into two parts. Part 1, how people drink at low risk level. Part 2, how people perceive risk and maintain their drinking at low risk level. I hope it can provide you better understanding of the interplay between people and their low risk drinking behaviors today. Let's get started. Low-risk level drinking is usually alongside doing other things at home or interacting with other family members. Let's take a look at how people said. A glass of wine many with dinner every night. A yearly shell bottle has a each of white wine with my husband on a Saturday and Saturday night when we watch a movie. The light drinking occasion means a transition from work or housework time to leisure or self-care time. It symbolized a trait or reward for finishing an everyday task and is usually depicted as down time when down and time out. As people said, It sends a signal to myself if I'm having a drink it's because I'm allowing myself the time to relax. It promotes quality time with my husband and on occasion my son. They both have stressful jobs and need opportunities to deep breathe. In a form setting or party, consuming one or two drinks can trigger an increased sense of sensibility. Even holding a glass containing non-alcoholic drink also can ease small talk and quell social awkwardness. Enjoying the flavors of special wine or beer with friends at good social times associated with it are always good moments in my life. On social occasions, I will sometimes just hold a glass and barely have any of it. No one notice. Thus, some people use light drinking to promote sociability. At times, I feel that people talk more freely if they are aware that I am having a drink with them. At work functions, everyone has one or two drinks. You are in the great minority if you are not drinking. When others insisted that alcohol was not needed to authenticate new or existing connections. I don't feel the need to drink either, which is the thing. It's like, I literally don't need alcohol to have a good time. I don't need alcohol to go up to someone and talk to them. Like, I just can have a good time by myself. You know what I mean? I, I'm really good. More explicitly, consuming non-alcoholic beverages with others carried equal social meanings for a few, particularly for some women. I can have just as much fun socially without drinking. Drinking with my neighbor is a very social thing to do. We sometimes do the same thing, but with a cup of tea or coffee. The alcohol consumption of these moderate drinkers is more about aesthetics. They appreciate the sensory aspects, mainly taste, but also the texture and aroma of different beverages rather than quantity. Why boutique beer or top shelf spirits were materials to be appreciated, especially among those mid aged people? Have reached the stage in my life where quality is a meaningful factor in my choice of drink, and that of comes at a much higher price point. I like champagne, so one glass sandwich is better than a bottle of cheap stuff. In China, more and more young urban people are creating their own drinking aesthetics. They abandon the drinking habit that often linking the strength of alcohol drink with the depth of social connections. The stronger the drinking, the tighter the bond it represents. But nowadays, more young people prefer to taste, to enjoy the learning process of wine tasting, 
which enable them to feel modern and sophisticated. In Japan, the national drink sake, with its different types, deep knowledge, and aroma vocabulary, has renowned for its unique flavor, a gentle sweetness with subtle acidity, and a hint of bitterness or astringency, has captured the hearts of tasters worldwide. Despite different countries have shaped their own low-risk guidelines, such as Australia's latest guideline recommended no more than 10 standard drinks a week and no more than four in a day, Canada suggested two drinks per week, the UK advises no more than 14 units a week, the US recommends no more than two drinks a day for men and one for women. The language used in these guidelines such as two drinks or 10 standards or 14 units are usually vague, simplistic, and difficult to actually implement. Furthermore, people's perception of drinking risk doesn't always match those of health suggestions. In fact, people's understanding of risk is influenced by various psychological, social, and cognitive factors which may not align with the rational wisdom of scientific risk knowledge. In a neoliberal governance, individual well-being hinges on each person's ability to govern themselves responsibly, exercise self-control, and manage their own actions. This idea is in line with Foucault's notion of governmentality, which he described as a conduct of conduct, aiming to guide, rather than discipline. It means individuals who are self-interested, aware of risks, and take action in accordance with official standards for safe and healthy living. Thus, concerning alcohol or risk management, it means two things. On one hand, an individual's relationship to alcohol is seen as a private matter that the authorities should not interfere directly. On the other hand, authorities, particularly health agencies, seek to influence individuals' behavior towards alcohol by promoting risk-averse attitudes. People are not disciplined, but guided to become rational self-governors. Low-level drinkers presented the point of this neoliberal governance. As people said, my beer was a small but strong IPA, so maybe 1.5 standard drinks. I do marrow by shot glass to ensure I don't overindulge. I feel that by just having two shots per day, I can enjoy a regular drink without feeling that I was sleeping to pouring large drinks and had happened in the past. Low-level drinkers will stop drinking when they have modest effects such as a gentle buzz, feeling slightly tipsy, or a mellow feeling. This desired state was often reached with one or two drinks. However, many moderate drinkers mentioned they stopped drinking based on their bodily perception rather than relying on feeling slightly tipsy or dizzy. The researchers pointed out there exists a zone. These low-level drinkers can perceive a zone, and they always stayed in the zone, but not passing the point of no return. I'd love to drink, but not get drunk. Get to that level of that perfect level, you know, and stay there in the zone. That's what it is. I feel like I've developed an internal kind of gate, which I know I don't want to go through. It's not necessarily that I feel sick or I feel dizzy. Is that one be a point of being full or just being full? And I, I don't know, maybe happy. I don't know, I'm just like. No, that's it. That's enough. It's definitely subconscious, I think. When people think the moment they should stop drinking, they will change physical stance and or moving away from the immediate social situation. For example, going to the toilet or standing up. Without a doubt, zero alcohol consumption is the safest option. Even drinking at low risk levels still pose risks to physical health. 
However, the realistic examples are the lifetime odds of dying in a car accident are one in ninety-three. Yet we still drive. Eating curd foods prone to cancer, but we still love bacon. We even go skydiving. We choose these things because we want to do them, in spite of the known risks. Hurt said, "That's where alcohol needs to be lopped." Choosing any choice in life is a personal affair. As far as drinking is concerned, the reality is that people have been long getting pleasure from small quantities of alcohol consumption. I'm one of them. I myself clearly recognize that alcohol is not benign. Yet I choose drinking one or two glasses of wine at some special occasions with my husband, my friends, or my colleagues. The occasional glass is a risk worth taking for me. How about you? Welcome, leaving your opinions. Okay, that's all for today. Have a lovely day. See you next time. Bye bye.